Yeah, let's just we'll leave it there and come back. Do I have a look to the This is called the Siak from the northern Ghana.
making a film celebrating inspiration from many different cultures. And so we're hoping at the end the film will show the one coming through to celebrate all the diversity coming from one thing. And so we were hoping that it might be okay to film a little during your service for a small donation. The drums means a lot to us in Africa because anything we do in the ancient time, you know, we talk with the drums. Last night we had um, some local singers, I don't really know what style they are or anything, and they just, it's, it's amazing how some people just go for it straight away and other people they have to lead them in and they're a bit nervous and they don't really understand what the technology is about, but they just came in and straight away just started singing and dancing and having a vibe and about 45 minutes later we were finished. <laughs> Wicked, 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 wicked
to do another song? You want to do another song? I just sussed out a way of recording on the laptop without having to have the mixing desk and everything, so that'd be nice. So if we meet anybody, I can just stick the mic out and in sync with the music and record it. For me, that's exciting. Probably for everyone else, that's, oh my God, what's good about that? But I get excited about stuff like that. And uh, we're sitting here, we've got the uh, room tidied away, and um, we've got Final Cut Pro up, and uh, the Invisible Man's just trying to suss out how to do chroma key on the Mahatela coins. We, got a bit of, we wanted a bit of molly cuddling, so we've come to the, uh, what's this place called? What about this then? Marimba to end all marimbas. Don't know where we are, but we've, we've landed in this really friendly place. Kids singing and it's just amazing. A million miles from home and the biggest marimba I've ever seen and probably I ever will see. <laughs> This is called the Siak 
from the north in Ghana. Film celebrating inspiration from many different cultures. Hallelujah. And so we're hoping at the end the film will show the one coming through to celebrate all the diversity coming from one thing. Hallelujah. And so we were hoping that it might be okay to film a little during your service for a small donation. Oh, I have this part of it. You can do for the hands and I feel welcome to you. Would you like to wait a little first or start now? Or The drums means a lot to us in Africa because anything we do in the ancient time, you know, we talk with the drums. Just the breeze. 
see the camera, pop of the top lip and just to say cheese. But when I see you, baby, I just go weak, weak at the knees. That's what I liked it. I did really like about the snake. Just that parabelly story kind of feel. I, I want more of it. I haven't got enough. So it's lovely. It's so, it just sucks you in. And you're all... Last night we had um, some local singers, I don't really know what style they are or anything, and they just, it's, it's amazing how some people just go for it straight away and other people they have to lead them in and they're a bit nervous and they don't really understand what the technology is about. But they just came in and straight away just started singing and dancing and having a vibe and about 45 minutes later we were finished. <laughs> I just sussed out a way of recording on the laptop without having to have the mixing desk and everything, so that'd be nice. So if you meet anybody, I can just stick the mic out and in sync with the music and record it. For me, that's exciting. Probably for everyone else, that's, oh my God, what's good about that? But I get excited about stuff like that. And uh, we're sitting here and we've got the uh, room tidied away and um, we've got Final Cut Pro up and uh, the Invisible Man's just trying to suss out how to do chroma key on the Mahatela Queens. We, got a bit of, we wanted a bit of molly cuddling, so we've come to the, uh, what's this place called? What about this then? Marimba to end all marimbas. Don't know where we are, but we've, we've landed in this really friendly place. Kids singing and it's just amazing. A million miles from home and the biggest marimba I've ever seen and probably I ever will see. <laughs>
Bangalore for about two hours, and we've come here to this uh, temple to record uh, Shrimp Bus. And uh, once again, a lovely place. Shoot from that side and get this one that in the background. When it will wash out. Amazing, amazing. Have to light it if you like. Yeah, light it. Yeah. This is a piece, it's about 10 minutes, this piece. There's a mix of kind of uh, Western pop with a tabla. We had put a lot of things on this in, in Africa and India. We put some uh, Katakali um, uh, violin.
So it seems we have a problem. The location, we had a beautiful location we had sorted out. Um, the guy who gave us permission and we worked out our price with wasn't really the right guy. And now they found we're doing music and suddenly the bosses have been contacted and uh, um, voices have been raised. Drummers. They sound amazing. They've got the most amazing drums I've ever seen. But the tempo they play is so fast, we're having real trouble finding any of our tunes that are fast enough to be able to deal with their rhythm. Great. Yeah. I am not one who is so big to give a message, but it is my earnest wish that people should consider themselves as one. Investigating the uh, possibilities. Can you carry here? in the West are used to thinking of three world religions, right? Judaism, Christianity, Islam. You come out to the Far East, some of them that doesn't have any relevance on their to their life. There's Hinduism, there's Buddhism, and a host of other things. So we in our, in our little world forget sometimes about the billion Chinese and the 100 million uh, or 800 million Indian and so on, which constitute the majority of the world. In a, in a real way. We're having one of those South Africa mornings, even though we're in uh, Australia. Everyone is exhausted. We've been on the flight all night. We just had every tiny thing that we're carrying gone through in customs. We haven't really got a lot sorted here, actually. We're going to try and find some storytellers. We're going to try and edit some of the stuff for the website. I'm making no sense at all, but you can see the charisma is still here.
wheelchair through her legs and, and her bums and that. It's actually just a, to so in some way make ourselves equal to that to a woman. I'm not saying it does, but it just acknowledges that superiority <laughs> and that debt that we owe. It's kind of what? Wow, that fucking hurts when you do that. Sorry. <laughs> People who, who live in this world and believe in that, that they are they have dominion over all things, they're fucked. Okay? Gone. If we got by as young kids believing that Maui was like our Batman, our Superman. So uh, he gave us license to be cheeky and to be go, try it, you know? So you see a lot of young Māori boys are cheeky little hooers, that's because they know they're whakapapa. And, you know, Māori was a trickster. My job here to be in New Zealand at this time and being a Māori is to make more Māori people. We're always going to be here, man. You have to kill the very last one of us, you know, because we're going to breed. <laughs> Chris Blackwell sorted us an interview out with Dennis Hopper. There's a code for them to even hear the doorbell. If you don't hit the code, they won't even hear that you're at the door. I wonder if it's bulletproof. Hi. This is Dennis's home, and he has an office. And so you know, I'm uh, I'm working on a retrospective. I have all these people coming from from Austria. From cavemen to the modern day, everyone makes art and music. And why, we're trying to look for where is, where is that coming from? You know, where, what is it that makes us all want to dance? Mm. Or what is it that makes us um, want to tell jokes? Or, you know, what? Art was a compulsion to me. It was like it was my, uh, it was my uh, surviving. It was my trying to understand uh, something that was going to live beyond my own lifetime, you know, uh, uh, until I realized that. Uh, uh, in six million years, there'll be nothing but dust anyway. Yeah, uh, six billion, I think it's six billion, four, four to six billion years, uh, this will all have dried up and will be whatever. stuff on there. Last night, I went to sleep as a child, only to wake up this morning and to find that I was a man. In my hands, I discovered the tools and the rage of my father. And in my heart, I found the love and the fears of my mother. The way that, that I have dealt with my shadow side is through playfulness. And I truly believe that, there, that wisdom cannot exist without it. So we're gonna, anyway, we're gonna go off and uh, interview Tom Roberts now, which is one of the first people I really, really wanted to try and get in our film. We might be going for a little bit of elder male approval and validation too, but we'll keep that off the camera. If you can get rid of fear and greed, then you can live in paradise. Not in the next life, but here and now. If you can live outside of the shadow of fear and uh, the hot flames of greed. The places we end up going are just wherever the person who called us happens to live. But like tomorrow we've got to go to LA to do, to, uh, to do, <laughs> to meet Dennis Hopper. To do him. I believe in everything, nothing is sacred. I believe in nothing and everything is sacred. And if it gets sloppy, 
eat it over the sink. Cool, man. Oh, you guys been traveling. Golly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Hey, you made me up the mark like a hot blade. I was feeling the music. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Real cool. Oh, okay. Real cool. I got so, you. where are y'all from? I got this. From London. Benefit of being a professional writer is making a living that way. Is don't bother me. I'm busy. Don't bother dad or don't bother mom. I'm busy. Leave me alone. Well, of course, that's going on in all middle class homes now, <laughs> where these people are in fact creating nothing. Uh, but the uh, again, uh, musicians, real musicians. Uh, are so lucky, and almost every writer I know wishes he were a musician instead of a writer, because as long as they are performing, they are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And uh, I look at a symphony orchestra, and boy, these people are hitting their notes exactly when they're supposed to hit them. There's no question about their making good use of their time on Earth. But no, I'm glad you guys came. You gave me something. What are you doing today? Well, two people are coming to uh, to interview me. That's nice. <laughs> I enjoy it because I was all alone. Well, any more questions? Fire away. Uh, what do you think happens after you die? After you die, well. You go and meet the great puppeteer in the sky and you ask him how you've done. Did I do well or did I shame myself? You start all over again. I believe in reincarnation, you know. It's just the puppeteer that changes. This loincloth belonged to a famous Indian leader, Ben Kingsley. I am a fakir. I am a guru. I have had personal acquaintance with the Buddha. He and I are one. I met him on a workshop. Could somebody get me a latte? If there was anyone that you could ask him, who would it be? Ah, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I like her. I think she's a fine actress. And lastly, would you... Oh, I'm not quite finished.
Basket. I'm a big issue seller. I'm a Bible believing Christian. I am a rainbow. I am God. I'm a flower seller. I am an animal rights activist. I am a product promoter. I am gardener. I love you.
their skinless wine. The Aboriginal people had a ceremony for them to help them on their merry way back to the spirit realm. But they didn't go. There are a number of uh, problems relating to what some people refer to as Indigenous or Native Australians. Sadly, a lot of our people were massacred uh, because of um, the greed that non-Aboriginal people did have when they first come to this country. People did have when they first come to this country. The fact that some group may have been born here a little bit earlier, I think, is quite inconsequential. It's very difficult to try and, and bring what are essentially a Stone Age people into the modern world and expect that there's not going to be a problem. If their culture is, it is of a Stone Age era, which really doesn't have a great deal to offer, except perhaps um, in, you know, in the minds of people who want to make things up, it really doesn't have a great deal to offer either them or us in the year 2000. Even though our people are living and adapting in this lifestyle, it's very important that we keep our dreaming alive for our young ones, our children's identity. very well thank you very much right now for housing me
some people went around interviewing dying patients, but not one person said they regretted, said they regretted not making more, not making more money or working harder, money or working harder. They all seem to say their, their regrets were not spending more time with the people they loved and not traveling more and, and relating more to, to the world and the planet. People who say that there's no God, right? You no, know, where's the evidence? Blah, blah, blah. Right, suppose I do a card trick for you, right? And you think, that's amazing. The effect of the trick is amazing. I have no idea how it's done, okay? But I'm the magician. I do know how it's done, right? But I choose not to share the secret with you. I just show you the effect, okay? So um, why can there not be a situation that the universe is created by God who's like a magician, like the number one master magician. He doesn't want to reveal the secret of how it's done or where it's come from or where it's going or the whys and wherefores. He just wants you to see the effect. But generally, you know, uh, you know uh, our mind is uh, our mind is uh, very confused, uh, very confused, and very restless, and very restless. So the meditation, I think, tries to make it a little bit calmer, a little bit more focused. So therefore, I think uh, uh, it makes you more your real self. In my case, it happened like this. That one day, suddenly I wondered, you see, who is this guy who lives, who is this guy who lives within me, within me, when I am asleep, when I am asleep. So, so I thought that I am sleeping, but I realized that there is somebody who is awake within me and he takes care of my blood pressure, my sugar, my chemistry of the body, of everything. And I thought that I never knew this guy who lives within me. Who is this? And then I realized that he doesn't talk when I talk. You see. He talks, you see, when I stop talking. You see. And he talks in terms of sensations, in terms of silence, in terms of inspiration, in terms of joy, in terms of producing energy. You see, this is his language. So I began to listen to his language, you see. And then I found that I was only breathing. And he was there. I was only breathing. And, and at one point of time, this duality that he and me are different, I see, began to it began to dissolve. Suppose you are salt, made of salt, and I ask you, tell me about the nature of sea. You go to sea and sink into the sea. You will be able to come back and tell me. 
If you go to the supreme truth, you cannot come back and kill. Sattva decided uh, he needed to go and see the Buddha, and uh, he, so he set off on foot. And somewhere along his journey, he came upon a man who was sitting in the lotus position, meditating. But he had uh, made several mistakes in that he hadn't chosen. A shady spot. So he was out in the sun. He was being absolutely cooked by the sun. He was all sunburned, dehydrated, and um, he also had made the mistake of sitting on an anthill. 
So the ants were crawling all over him and eating his flesh, and, and he was absolutely miserable. And as the Bodhisattva went by, he said, when you see the Buddha, ask him how long it's going to take for me to become enlightened. And the Bodhisattva promised to do that and continued on his way. And um, a few days later, he came across a second man who was dancing and laughing and singing. It's just in a state of exhilaration, just bopping around. And as the Bodhisattva went by, this man said, Hey, when you see the Buddha, ask him how long it'll be before I'm enlightened. And the Bodhisattva promised. So he went on, had his audience with the Buddha, and a few weeks later came back along the way. And he, he this time he, he came upon the first man first. And by now, you know, the ants had taken most of the flesh off of his body and he was just blistered from the sun and uh, he was practically dead, absolutely miserable. And um, the Bodhisattva said, uh, the Buddha says, it's gonna take six more lifetimes for you to become in life. I said, oh no, I can't stand it. The Bodhisattva goes on, comes upon the other man who is still laughing, still dancing, still singing, having his sips of wine and nice, uh, food out of the food bowl from time to time and as the Bodhisattva went by he said you see that uh, bush over there you see that small tree the one with all the leaves on it the Buddha said for every leaf on that tree that's another lifetime you're going to have to endure before you're enlightened and the man said is that all and began dancing and laughing and singing even more exuberantly and at that moment, he became enlightened. By the singing, by the playing, by the dancing, by the praying, make a happiness. That is, I got lost into books. I got lost into listening to others. I got lost into knowledge without taking the simple path of closing the eyes and trying to, to listen to him, listen to him. And when I, and when I sense him, sense him, Only silence remains because I have to listen to him. I have to listen to the silence. That deep surrender, that's cool. Alla 
Aji jule makai Medina Alaji Alaji dogi zava Alaji dogi marwa Overli makaje jamra rutiti ma Medina Jule ya nani Muhammad Rasulallah Salallahu alayhi The first step every human being has to take is to investigate the truth for him or herself. Because each and every one is responsible for his or her own spiritual progress. That's why before you become a Baha'i, you are called to investigate the truth for yourself. Don't rely on reading only the Baha'i writings, but you have to read other books. And if you try to look in, in the Bible, you'll find that Jesus Christ said that you'll recognize them through their fruits. It never happened with me and Jesus. And then I saw Jesus. And then I saw Johnny Weissmiller, Johnny Weissmiller in my first Tarzan film, in my first Tarzan film. And he meant everything. And he meant everything to me. He meant all that Jesus didn't mean. The freedom, the beauty, the excitement, uh, the exhilaration, this lift to another plane of existence. If you believe in Jesus, then you live a long way, you have a long way to go. But then if you say then, I don't believe in him, I don't, well, I sh I'm telling you, I have no doubt, your days are numbered. <laughs> and I have to laugh, because you tell a Māori to throw their heads up and say, hallelujah. And they say, well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus was the most radical revolutionary person ever to walk this planet. He would have been the last person to write anything down. He was totally against uh, uh, any kind of organized religion. Christ did not want to think. And the manipulation of his message has been amazing. I mean, he would not have put up for a one iota of this stuff. Yeah, I could just see Jesus watching the American, you know, TV, Christian channel, and barfing. I'm baffled every day by the fact that Christianity has survived and flourished, and particularly that women would be attracted to it, since from its very inception, it was employed as a device for controlling the power of, of the female. I mean, the, the three major religions, which are actually all one religion, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, were all devised as a way of damming the dark waters of female sexuality. How any woman could be a Christian is an absolute mystery to me. The, the uh, goddess in her many guises and manifestations was the most dominant holy figure on earth for thousands of years and yet she has been so successfully eradicated that certainly the majority of Americans and particularly American women have no idea that she ever even existed let alone had the power that she had. The idea of people using him to further negate who we truly are, I think would be just the final blow, you know, worse than the crucifixion. I mean, to use his very message, his energy, his life force against people claiming their natural born right to party would have really bugged the shit out of him. It's like, oh, they weren't even Christians, they couldn't be, because this is what they were doing, and this is what Christ says that we should do. It's like totally different. And that's what's so ironic to me, because so few people actually decide to check it out, actually decide to check it out for themselves, you know, and like they'll look at themselves, you know, and like they'll look at the, the history of these acts, at the, the history of these acts, and, and it's so true, even as a black person, and, and it's so true, even as a black person, man, the first slave ship that brought slaves home to America was called Jesus. 
it's like, if I looked at that, I'm like, golly, you know, I don't definitely, that's the last person. And that's exactly how I used to think until I actually looked at the Bible and said, oh no, that's not Jesus. That was just a man. It has actually nothing to do with Christianity. You know, men, we have a lot of ulterior motives. A lot of times we use religion because it's such a personal thing. It's such a deep thing in, in most people's hearts. And we sometimes use it to enslave people. Even here in Africa, you know, let's take some of our churches. You'll find pastors, they will tell you good things, you, yes, you have to love God and so on. But those priests, if you try to look deeply in what they are doing, it's totally contrary to what they've been telling us in churches. The, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, buried in a dry well in uh, the Sinai. and. We discovered books from the gospel that had been completely removed from this abridged version that the spin doctors uh, put together for our, our edification. Uh, a great deal of that ancient wisdom disappeared in the, the great fire in Alexandria, which was set by a bishop. Uh, in the library, the, the largest library that ever existed was in Alexandria, and it contained all the stories and all the wisdom of the ancient world. And Bishop Theosophus uh, had it burned to the ground because he didn't want there to be any record of anything of any worth occurring before Christ. Before Jesus, before Jesus, the world was the world. But existing, existing. We have two thousand. We have two thousand years before Christ. We have two thousand years before Christ.
Jidama funtatama Kunto mayurmata koma Jidama funtatama Kunto mayurmata koma Jidama beita nirbe Onde ko kanyama Kanyama beita ni anbe Onka iku jidama Ngema alla yidi yana Ngema alla yidi tampa Ngema alla yidi zura Hey, this is you. I don't
things I forgot The footstool of God That's how I be I've righted myself And folded my hands As you talk to God I love the way you treat I love the way you dream I love the way you treat I love the way you treat
all of my restraint must sweet My aim was clumsy And even if there's only one thing I want for you I want for you I love the way you love, the way you dream One for you, one for me, one for you One for me, one for you
music here we have post-mortem here we have music spare parts we can take it up and hang it or put it down uh, and uh, spread it pull it and shorten it here by the singing by the by the singing by the playing by the dancing playing by the dancing by the praying Make a happiness. Rhythm is the mother tongue. It's the one language we all speak. It's the language that every it's the language that everything speaks. It's the language you can speak. It's the language. It is the language. The mother tongue. It is the language. The mother tongue.
dance for it, music's very nice, you know. You feel very comfortable, you feel very joyful and all the tensions in your mind, it gets all cleared, you know. And you are in the, another world of music, very nice music. It is a grave and, and serious and serious and enormous mistake, enormous mistake to take oneself too seriously, to take oneself too seriously. And at the moment, we are at war against war, and music is our unifying force. And I have a friend in Cheyenne. When he was nine years old, they found him running around the reservation up in the mountains, and they made him go to school, but he couldn't speak English, like, he, he, you know. So to punish him, the teacher sat him in a corner room and put what they called a dunce hat on his head, like a dunce, and he had to sit there all day. Well, later on, when he learned to speak, he told his, children, his other children at school, he didn't realize he was being punished in the Cheyenne Nation, if you do something good, they decorate your head. So he sat there proud all day. When you are a little on the low, eh, you listen to music, it soothes you, it comforts you, it makes you happy. Like I always say, that money can make you happy, right? For $20, I'll be happy as a clam. <laughs>
feel it's so simple. <laughs> I believe I have given you the message. just like braided hair because it's so like twist you know you know about braiding <laughs> like twist you know three strands twist together and ultimately you get to where you want to get to you know from the same dirt from the, from the same dirt from the heels of my ancestors and the heels of my ancestors and they get rose in the fields where the pain fest get rose in the fields where the pain fested i wonder where the hole came to i wonder where the hole came from in my heart, maybe yearn for the job. It's the same place where the cross is burned. The same place where the loss was earned. It's the place where the floss was yearned. No teeth and bling, ice on the rings, maybe sure. Yo, we all got things that hang on our back. Things that make us cool, things that make us whack, things that make us mad. Things we wish we never had done. But they're just the things that make us real. Not the maps that guide where we go from here. The road twists and braids like hair. Until we all get there we Talk about miracles, we are a miracle, we're all living a miracle here I like that I don't know some mysteries Ancient things and beginnings Excited about the day when I don't have to hear all the theories My scalp needs some grease In the same place where the cross is burned The same place where the loss was earned the only way we all can learn is if we have these braids with the twist and turn. So we all got things that hang on our back, things that make us cool, things that make us whack, things that make us mad, things we wish we never had done. But they're just the things that make us real, not the maps that guide where we go from here. The road twists and braids like hair until we all get there. Walking in the race of life, looking for my own pace Not always wanting to, but I have to Sometimes feeling like I've bitten up much more than I can chew But the wind goes through my hair and lifts me up with ease Not a crease, hair full of grease, no weave embracing me It's you I see, yeah. I am you and you are me, I see, yeah color your skin, matter the color your skin, it doesn't matter where we, it doesn't matter where we come from, because we are, come from, because we are one, a one, and we should know that we are one, I am you and you are me, I see, yeah, we might survive as brothers, yeah, all perish here as fools, don't place your bets, don't get too soon, yeah, you might find Another feels like someone you was new You know that face Yeah, we all do We might survive as brothers Yeah, all perish here as fools So place your legs Don't get too soon Yeah, you might find me in another Feels like someone you was new Josh, Africa, Ghana. Uh, this number is entitled Over Street.
Dear Daddy, I'm sorry. I really am. I guess I really blew it this time, huh?